Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we can apply the central limit theorem to different types of distributions in Python through three different examples. We're going to be taking a look at a skewed distribution as well as a binomial distribution and also a Poisson. Uh, the libraries that we'll be utilizing for this video are primarily NumPy and SciPy, but we will be using Matplotlib and Seaborn for plotting. Now, before we do jump into these examples, I do want to go over a little bit more information about the central limit theorem, so let's do that. Okay, so a little bit more information on the central limit theorem before we start coding. Uh, so central limit theorem states that if we take many samples from any population distribution, the distribution of the sample means will approach a normal distribution. So on the left over here, we have a right skewed exponential distribution. You can see that there's a ton of values near zero, but as we approach 10, um, there's very few, right? So once we take the mean of a lot of different samples, you can see how we build this out. So we have the samples over here and most, or I'd say like the mean on this side of things is anywhere from probably like 1.8 to two, somewhere around on that side of things, which makes sense because if you go to the left, right, the frequency most is around zero to about two or three. And uh, we do have the one outlier on a 3.5, but this looks like a lot more like a normal distribution. Now, is it perfect symmetrical? No, right? But it, it's pretty close. And let's talk about how we can do this. So start with the population, right? In this video, we're going to look at a right skewed distribution, a binomial distribution, and also a Poisson distribution. Then take samples from the distribution. So ideally, you want to find more than 25 numbers in a sample, and we need to have uh, at least 30 plus samples. So find the means of each sample, plot the means on a histogram, and more samples equals closer to a normal distribution. So with this background out of the way, I think we're ready to start coding in Python. All right, so let's get started. Import numpy as np, import scipy.stats as stats, import seaborn, as SNS and import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So you have that, all your dependencies and imports are ready to go. Uh, one other thing, set up a random seed, np.random seed, I'll set that to 13. Okay, and uh, example number one, we're gonna look at a skewed distribution. So example one, skewed distribution and let's get started. So let's set our population. So population size equals we'll do 100,000, so 100 to like that. And then what we'll also do is we'll set our scale. So scale equals two and we're gonna set up essentially NP random exponential. So uh, we'll say skewed equals np dot random exponential and inside over here scale equals scale and then size equals population size great and uh, let's plot this out just to show you guys what it looks like so we'll do hist plot hist plot we'll pass in our exponential data which I have over here as skewed. And then we'll also pass in our, uh, well, do we want a KDE? Yeah, we'll set a KDE equals true. We'll set that over here. Uh, then we'll set our title. So plt.title, right skewed data. Then we'll set our X label, plt.x label, and also our Y label. So just copy these over change your X to a Y. X side of things, we'll put value. Y is gonna be frequency. And uh, let's set our show. So plt.show, we're good to go. So some no errors, which I don't think there should be. This will plot out. Let's see how it does. There we go. Our skewed data. And uh, we're gonna be taking a bunch of means from here. So let's do that. So we can get our normal distribution of these means. So what we'll say, we'll have like skewed means. So skewed means equal, and we'll have this as an empty list because we're gonna populate this list. Uh, we'll say our samples on this one, samples equals 1000 samples. 
And then what we'll also take a look at is our sample size. Now I'm gonna test two different sample sizes with you guys. Uh, first one we'll do is 30 and the next one we'll do is 100. A lot of the code's gonna stay the same. So maybe I'll just do like sample size um, version one. I think that's how we're gonna do it. And uh, let's set this up. So we're gonna have to create a loop to go through all these samples. So we're gonna say is for i in range, pass in your uh, number of samples, which we defined as 1000, right? And uh, if you're not familiar with for loops, please check out my Python video. I, I have that on the channel. So that way, if you're jumping into statistics or you're jumping in machine learning, we have some basic Python videos. Okay, uh, so for i in range, and we also cover what range is, but I'll, I'll go over here and sample equals np dot random choice, choice. And then first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in our skewed data. And I wanna say I called it just skewed. So let's pass in our skewed, right? Our size equals our sample size. So our, our size is gonna be 30. And then replace is false. So replace equals false. Then what we're gonna do is calculate our mean. So sample mean equals, and we're gonna sum our mean, which we have over here from the sample. Man, I said that wrong. Let me say it again. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sum our sample, right? And then divide by our sample size, which is gonna be the same, right? It's gonna be 30. and it's gonna be constant throughout here. And then we're gonna append it. So we go back over here to skewed means. We'll say skewed means dot append and then pass in this sample mean like that. Okay, and now let's plot this distribution and see how it looks. Remember over here, right? We're taking a look at all the data. It's skewed to the right, but now we're gonna be taking a look at the means. And as mentioned with the central limit theorem, uh, we should be expecting a normal distribution. So let's do that. So we'll go to plt.hist. We'll pass in our skewed means, right? Skewed means, okay. Then what we'll have is bins equal 30, bins equals 30, and then edge color equals black, and then density is true. And a lot of this should be the same. So I'm gonna copy this and we'll just change this out. So our title this side is right skewed means, right? And then uh, we'll put for our X label, we'll say means, sample means. And then we'll still have frequency and we should be good to go. And we should be expecting something somewhat normal. So you can see this looks already way better than this over here, right? We've, we've completely changed it. Uh, and again, this looks at the means, this does not look at the means. But what I wanna say is you look where the center is, right? Uh, most of the data is gonna be between 1.5 and 2.5 and you go over here, right? It makes sense. Uh, just taking a look at this where the majority of that data is. Okay, and uh, let's take a look if we redid this, but we're gonna look at uh, a sample size of 100. So we're gonna get even better normal distribution with that. So let's do our sample size of 100 and we'll call this V2. And let's rerun both these codes. So the first one over here, let's grab sample size V2. All right, so we have this and uh, we will rerun this and you'll see this looks even better now, right? So look at that. This, in my opinion, way better representation, right? This one kind of goes up, down, up, and like you can see the shape, like on the outline, but this one, man, this looks awesome. And I'm sure if I increase the sample size even more, it would look even better, but I'm pretty happy with that result. And I think I'm good enough now to move on to example number two. Uh, which we're gonna be taking a look at a binomial distribution. I should say also, I do have an example of skewed distributions here on the channel. So make sure to check those out right, left uh, in comparison to a normal distribution. I don't have exponential covered yet, but I'll be making a video on that. Um, I do have binomial that should be out soon as well. So let's take a look at binomial. So we'll say example to a binomial distribution. And a lot of this is gonna be the same, right? 
But uh, let's start off with setting our trials. So we're going to say trials equals 10 on this side of things. And then what we're going to look at is a success. So success equals 0 0.5. Okay. And then we'll say population size, which I believe we already defined this above, but just to have it here, we'll say it's 100,000 again. And uh, let's create our binomial data. So binomial data equals np.random.binomial pass in your trials. So in trials, then success, and success, and pass in the population size. Great. So we have all of these over here. And let's again create a hist plot. So I'm going to just reuse code because why type out everything all over again, especially with these graphs. And what we're going to do is pass in our binomial data like this. We don't need a KDE on this side of things. So I'll say false. Uh, and then we'll say binomial. And we can keep value and frequency. So you can see, right? Let's say in this example, we're doing 10 coin flips each trial, right? Or are we have 10 trials, right? So 10 coin flips and the success is 0 0.5. So we expect to get five as the most common occurrence. And this is what this is showing. So now let's take a look at all the averages associated with it. And uh, what we'll say is we'll say sample size, binomial, so like bin equals 30. I'm good with 30 on this one. And then number of samples equals a thousand. We'll do the thousand again. And uh, we'll say bin samples equals, and we'll have this link list. And what I'm gonna do is we'll go over here and we'll copy this code. And so number of samples were good. So sample equals np.random choice. Then let's grab our binomial data. So we have our binomial data size equals, and we have our sample size bin. Let's actually make this 50. Just change this up a little bit because we did 30 earlier. All right, so it's gonna be 50 replaces false. Sample mean, we'll say like, well, that's fine. Sample mean is sample divided by sample size over here. And then we'll say bin means dot append or bin samples. Probably should have just had this as bin mean samples or bin mean. Let me relabel that. I apologize. So bin mean dot append and we'll pass in the sample mean. I think everything should be correct here. Just double check sample equals NP random choice. Pass in binomial data size is this 50 over here. Sample mean is number of sample, which is right over here. Sample size bin, which we have right over here. Again, populated there. And then our means, which we're gonna append, right? Is the sample mean here? Yeah, that should be correct. And uh, let's uh, print this out again. So I saw what this looks like. And we're just gonna pass in our bin mean, bins there. And then we'll say binomial means. Guess it's the same. And take a look at this. So again, our normal distribution. We do have that one outlier way over here. We'll just slide under 4.2. But uh, overall, pretty cleaned up. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. And again, we could change this up. If we changed our sample size to 100, right? We're gonna look even closer. Let's rerun this. And like I said, feel free to play with the code. A little bit better, but not, not too much compared to 50. Um, all right, we're gonna look at our last example, which is a, a Poisson distribution. Hopefully this is kind of getting ingrained in your head what the central limit theorem really does. But example three, sign distribution. Yeah, man, look at that spelling. All right, 
And first thing we'll do is we'll set our lambda value. So lambda the sun. And that's the average number of events. So we'll say the average events is three. We'll do the population size again of population size. Again, I didn't need to specify that since we already have to in the code, but just so we aren't confused, the sun data equals np dot random the sun lambda and then also our population size great and then we can plot this again so just plot this over here we can take a look at what the plot looks like so plot in our Poisson data we don't need a KDE on this one Take a look at this one, right? Again, we see a little bit of skewness over here, a very similar to our first example, but this one's taking a look at uh, our Poisson, right? And uh, number of events. Okay, so now let's take a look at central limit theorem with Poisson. So we'll say sample size, and this one equals 30. All right, so I'll run that over here. Number of samples equals 1,000. And then lastly, what we're going to do is sample, we'll say Poisson means equals, and it's going to be a blank list like that. Now we can copy over our code that we already used above over here for the I in range, but we'll have to change this out for Poisson. So first let's grab our Poisson data, which we have right here. So Poisson data size equals, and we have our sample size over here of 30 then some samples divided by our sample size. And then we're gonna say Poisson means dot append and we'll append this sample mean. Great. And then let's just copy over this over here for the means. And uh, this works correctly. So we're uh, grabbing our Poisson means 30 and then just change it all these Poisson. Run this and check it out. Most of our values between 2.5 and 3.5. Does that make sense? We'll look at two, right? And then four over here. So yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me why most of our means are over there, that range. And you can see that this is now almost normally distributed. It's not the best, but uh, we could tweak our bins, we could tweak the other things over here, like our sample size, number of samples, and see if we can get a better result. But for this YouTube video, I think uh, we are good to go. So essentially I showed you guys three different examples, right? And we started above over here with our uh, skewed data. And uh, take a look at that. We took the means and also changed up the sample size from 30 to 100. Then we took a look at example binomial data. Same thing with the means. And then lastly, Poisson and means. Feel free to test this out on other distributions as well. But for the video's sakes, I think it was getting a little repetitive after three. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the central limit theorem. If you found this valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel. One of our goals here is to reach 100,000 subscribers in 2025. And the only way we achieve that is by uploading three plus data science focused videos every single week. Now, if you want to learn even more about statistics, I have a few videos linked down below, as well as a playlist right over here that you can check out.